Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <clears throat> it's great to be here with you guys. Folks. Folks. Folks, brethren. Sisters and brothers. Uh, all right, well, we'll just get going. But uh, it's good to see you guys. I know uh, we just barely made it here. I took some alternate paths with alternate speeds. And we are here. Benjamin slept great. He missed a nap, so... Hannah does not sleep great. She is the worst. <laughs> yeah, we're working on whatever that is. No, she fooled us like the first, since we're on that topic, like month two. She slept through the night great. Like, went on vacation, slept great. Then we hit month three and a half, <clears throat> and I don't know what happened. She fell apart. And now she's up every two, she's up two times a night. So I, I mean, I have the blessing of not having to do all those feedings. Um, but Ben does get up pretty early. And so, you know, he keeps us honest. But yeah, Hannah, I don't know. Uh, she's something else. She has a band-aid on this morning because she somehow cut herself mysteriously. So, if you see that, it should be a little bingo, bluey band-aid. All right, everyone settled. Everyone good to go. We got our we got our Bibles. We got our our thinking caps on. See if I can wake you up a little bit. All right. Why don't we turn to Colossians and we'll do some reading. We'll pray. And we'll get going. Okay, Colossians 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love which ye have to all saints, for the hope which is, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where have ye heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. Dear Lord, um, we're just so thankful for your Son and what He's done. Um, even though we push ourselves away, you... You did, uh, you did the work to span that great gulf between us, and uh, we now can rely on your Son, um, and we can call you Father, and uh, we're just so thankful for that. I, I thank you for all the brethren that are here, all the saints that are here today that love your word, and um, I just thank you for your hope that is uh, laid up before us in all these things. Amen. Okay, so... We, uh, last, last time, we looked through what it is to be a saint, and we kind of dislodged some of the things that the saint is not, and we hopefully put in place how to think properly about what a saint is, and we know that uh, we're set apart, but what makes us set apart is not our own doing, but what Christ did, and he set us apart, right? Right? And so today we're going to tackle the faithful brethren and what that really means, because I think up front 
when you read this epistle or, or epistles in general, understanding one who he's writing to, and, and you know, he's writing to Colossae here, but this is also you and us, right? Uh, ye. <laughs> and uh, so we need to understand these words, and I think it's important to know those things. And so, you know, it feels like we're getting stuck in the weeds a little bit, but uh, I think getting stuck in the weeds is the way you can really unpack it. You know, I, I, I'm hoping that as you guys read these things, and as I fellows, what was I supposed to say? I can't say guys. Folks. I'm supposed to say folks. <laughs> All right. Uh, folks, um, you know, as you, as you guys are reading this, that's something that you understand the words that are here and how to apply it to your life because, you know, I, I, I myself, and Ray, and... Uh, Rick and all of us are standing up here. Anyone else who guys are watching online, um, you know, we we can't take it and apply it to your life and and read it at home. Um, you know, that's something that you guys do at home, right? That's what you between you and the Lord. And so we can go through some words and make sure that you understand those. And then when you guys are going through it, we can come together and and understand these things. I think I say that every week, and I just think that's so important. Um, and it's a good reminder for myself as well. Uh, so, we're going to go through brethren, the faithful brethren, all right? So first, we are brethren where? In Christ, right? We're not brethren outside of that, all right? And I, I just, you know, the world likes to make themselves, we like to group ourselves in all sorts of things, and um, right, wrong, or indifferent. We're brethren in Christ. That's where we are. Uh reading the first, you know, verse 2 and verse 3 here, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace to be unto you and peace from what? God, our Father. We're brethren in Christ. We're in the family of God, our Father. Right? That's where we are. Uh, we give thanks to God and the Father of Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is the one who made us. We're, we are brethren in that, okay? Through your belief and what he's done, we're now brethren. And that also comes with, uh, and we're not going to study this today, we'll get into this later, but that also comes with what? Well, we we're sons, right? We're, the, we're sons in, in Christ, or yeah, with Christ to God, and we have a what? An inheritance. We're part of this family. Um, and specifically, we're brethren in Christ who follow after Paul. Uh, one book over, if you go to Philippians 3. Verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of who? Me. And mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. All right, we're brethren in this message, what we know as right, right division, right? This rightly divided word, Romans through Philemon. We know that that is where we are brethren. That's how we became brethren. Now, Israel, we're also what? Physical brethren, right? I mean, the amount of times the word brethren is used in the Bible is just ridiculous. I think uh, something like, I don't know, I looked it up a while ago. It's like 560-ish times, okay? Israel were literal, physical brethren, right? Now, when Christ came, he started dividing those people, right? Finding out who was the true circumcision and who was the fake circumcision. But they were a physical brethren, created also by who? God. That nation was not a nation before who? Or Abraham. And he didn't have a son on his own merit. God created him one through the faith of Abraham, right? And so that's also a nation, a physical nation created by God. That's where they are brethren. That's why they refer to themselves as brethren. And they also have a what? An inheritance. Okay? Just like we do. 
When you get to Joshua, what does Joshua start to do in the end of that book? All right, well, you guys, I mean, it's great to study. It's also a little boring. All right, you guys are going to get this land. All right, you guys are going to get this land. And it keeps going on throughout that, right? But there's a lot there to unpack. Um, they, he created his own nation and gave them an inheritance. And one of the things that they're going to inherit, one of those things, is the land. And we are brethren as well with an inheritance and a hope to come, which will we, be, will, we will see that in reality unfold, start unfolding that where? At the rapture, right? That will start to become, a, we'll start to understand, well, I mean, we can understand it now, but it will become a reality. Now, you can also be false, right? You can also be a false brother and go to Galatians. Much of the world is. Um, let's just start in verse 2. And I went up by revelation, uh, Galatians 2, verse 2. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run, or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of what? False brethren unaware brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Just... Flip on over to chapter 4, verse 31, uh, verse 30. Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be their heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free woman. All right, we are, we are brethren in this message that Paul brought, okay? And you need to understand that when you read this. There is things that are being said there in these words that, I mean, you just, and it's always amazing, right? You start studying, and you're like, yeah, brethren, there's not probably not too much there. And there's a whole, like, we could continue to talk about this for a while, okay? And there's some other things I want to get to. But we are brethren. We need to think of ourselves in this room, Right? As you look around, this is, this is, this is it. <laughs> Yikes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come on, wake up. You guys look like you're all sleeping. <laughs> uh, not all of us can have as good hair as Ray. We all try. All right. We're awake. So faithfulness, what does it call us? Can we go back to the Colossians there? What is it called? Well, who is he writing to here in Colossians? What are they? To the saints, those are the set apart in Christ, and faithful brethren. So in Colossians, these are fully persuaded of God's truth. Right? These are the faithful. They can see it in the brethren there. You know, Paul hasn't even really... There's, a, there's, there's people at Colossae that have never met Paul. And you see that as you read through here. Right, but he knows of it. What does it say in verse 4? Since we heard of your faith. They, 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 they heard of the faith. Of the, they were brethren in this faith. Okay? And it goes on to talk about faith some more, quite a bit throughout that first chapter. And he repeats the word faith or faithful in, in chapter 2. And then he talks about some faithful people in chapter 4, which we went through. But Paul here is praying since he heard of their faith. He wants them to unpack what's there. But we know faith cometh by what? That is how you're built up. Okay, and I want to go through that a little bit here. The claim, the world likes to have faith in all sorts of stuff. Right? You hear it all the time. You can't go anywhere. There's, everyone has faith in something. Some people literally have faith in nothing. And I mean it. Like, they will profess that God is nothing. 
All right, well, that's still faith. But those faith, that faith, the claim is so easily seen without truth. And uh, what we have is not just a blind, I mean, the world will say we have a blind faith. But this Bible proves itself to us, right? So we're the faithful, here's writing to Colossae, the faithful brethren, of which you should think of yourself that way. But it's because of the thing we have the faith on that makes it worth anything. I hope I'm saying that correctly. That makes sense. This word of truth claims to be that. Go to Psalms 33. That's right, Hannah. Uh, Verse 4. For the word of the Lord... You're holding that in your hands. Psalms 33, verse 4. For the word of the Lord is right, and all His works are done in truth. The word of the Lord is right. It is righteous. It is correct. We believe it to be true, and there is no false here. And all of His works are done in what? Truth. We believe that. That's what this claims to be. He claims his word is correct, without blame, it's righteous, and his actions follow along in that truth. Constantly throughout Christ's ministry, what is he, what is he doing? He's going back to the word. This is what the word is. This is what, hey, not my will, your will be done. Deuteronomy verse 7. Or chapter 7. Chapter 7. Verse 6. Deuteronomy... 7 verse 6 For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth the Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of the bondwoman, from the hand of the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. See, we're faithful brethren because the thing we have trust in is faithful which keepeth the covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. He made them set apart and he chose them because the Lord loved them. Not that there was any love coming from them first, right? The Lord initiated that. He started that. And he made a promise to their fathers. Therefore, he delivered them from Egypt. You and I, same thing. He pulled us out of the sin that we were in. We were enemies. He's, worth, he's worthy of our trust. He is full of faith. He is faithful. Numbers 
verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Is the Lord someone who's not going to follow what he said he would do? He will not turn away from what he promised to Israel. Now, on a side note, you know, the, there's people who will call, call contradictions here. Because uh, it says here, neither the Son of Man, that he should repent. But what do we know happens in Genesis 6? Genesis 6, how does it say that? It says... And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was, o- was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and grieved him at his heart. So here's, here's a version where it says, well, God repents, right? And then I'm reading you a verse that says uh, that he should, neither so the son of man, that he should repent. So then you go, okay, well, what's going on here, right? We need to understand this. And this is a side note to what we're talking about, so think of this as a rabbit trail in our faithful here. Um, God changes his mind on how he's going to deal with man here. Man kills. He gave them dominion over the earth, right? Didn't, when Adam and Eve, what did he tell them to do? Go out. One of those things is dominion. He, re, he repurposes what he's going to do. And um, I don't have it written down here, but um, uh, uh, chapter 9 of Genesis. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And it doesn't necessarily go on to be anything about dominion there. Right, So the Lord changes his mind about it, but God will continue to accomplish his promise that he made. He's doing it, he's going to do it a different way. He starts fresh with Noah, right? Hey, the body of Christ was different, right? Is he coming to save man? Yeah, he did. He came and he's holding true to that promise. So, you know, don't get, don't get all caught up in people and their contradictions, okay? Have some, this, this word will prove to, to you that it is faithful. That's why, kind of why I wanted to go through that super quick. All right, this book claims to be worthy of trust, and it proves to be that. Think about how many prophetic truths have been laid out in front of you, right? I mean, with Jesus Christ alone, it's like 200 plus prophecies about Jesus Christ, and they all come true. This isn't just blind faith that we just walk in here and we go, well, yeah, here's a book. It looks pretty good, right? It is worthy of your trust. What does Romans 3.22 say? Romans 3.22, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. He is full, he is worthy to be trusted. Look, he's so worthy of being trusted. What is, hold your hand there in Romans and get uh, 2 Timothy. Second Timothy 2.13, if we believe not, yet he abideth what? Faithful. He cannot deny himself. He's so faithful that even when you aren't, he is. He's going to make it. He's going to make it happen. We are part of this faithful brethren. Romans 3.3, 3, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? 
Right? These are the questions that people ask. We are part of this faithful brethren because we have something here that's worthy to have faith in. It has proved itself to be faithful to us. 2 Thessalonians 3. Ray will be here shortly. Well, maybe. <laughs> Verse 3, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Now, how does he do that? Christianity chooses not to study the Word of God and then chooses to make the Word of God just another book and it just happens to be here. You need 17,000 translations and so to even try to understand it and you know so they just call it kind of blind faith and he establishes you. You just pray a certain prayer in the corner or whatever it is. You pray a certain way or you go pray in front of people and he'll make his will available to you and that's how he establishes you. What do we know? Well, we have the KJV right here. We know that's his word. And we can go in here and it will, it will establish you. It will make you establish. God is faithful to do that to you through his word. Everyone has the same chance. It's not this guy over here who's super special and that guy who's not. We all have this. The only thing that maybe makes them more special, if you want to look at it that way, is because maybe they got in the word and they found out what it is. But the only thing that's really special in them is Christ in them. 1 Corinthians 1. Verse 9. Uh, let's just... Um, why, don't we, why don't we just first start in verse 7. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto this fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. You were called, this is us here. We're the brethren. This is the fellowship together, this room. All right? And those of us who believe throughout the world, right? We know it's not just us, although it can feel like it's just us. John sixteen thirty three. Hmm. Is that what I wanted? Hmm. Verse thirty three. 1633, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Where? On, on TV? On making yourself, at the end of the night you had a bad day, I'm going to do whatever it is that I do to make myself feel better. No, where do we have peace? In the world ye shall have what? Tribulation, not peace. But of the but but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The reason we have anything that's worthy is because he overcame it. We only make a world that does not have peace and has tribulation. Right? Uh, back to Colossians. And so Paul is, is here in Colossians and he's, he's talking to the, to the saints and faithful brethren and he prays for them always. And when he starts praying them in verse 4, since we heard of your faith in 
Christ Jesus. It starts with the faith there in verse 4, right? We heard of your faith. I'm going to pray for you. And then what, is it, what do they have? And of the love which ye have to all saints. It's, it's starting to work in them, right? This word is starting to work in them. And they have love to all the saints, all the ones who are set apart by Christ. And then there's what? What does that make? Hope. Verse 5. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven. Where have you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel? The gospel is what we heard that created a faith in us. So you can't just like have faith on your own. You have to hear something that gives you faith. When, uh, shoot, I can't think of the verse right now, but in Matthew there when it says, you know, increase my faith, what does he do? Does he do some magic thing or does he start to explain to them what's going on? He starts to explain to them. And that gets us to a place where then we can start laboring for him. Right? The laboring doesn't come first. The laboring is what comes out of us due to what he puts in. And so by the time you get to the... You, he worked through the first chapter here, and what, of which we will start to go through at some point. Um, and you start to understand that he's praying for them because he heard of their faith and he knows they have a hope. And they're starting to bring forth fruit. And he heard of it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. Um, what does uh, um, 1 Corinthians 4 say about that? 1 Corinthians 4, I think. Yeah. First Corinthians four in, at the end of uh, chapter three there, and ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Let man so account of us, chapter four, verse one, as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. But with me is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. I don't care what you think about me. Or of man's judgment. I mean, I really don't care what man's judgment thinks. I was listening to a something this morning. And a song came on. And it's, you know, a, a contemporary artist. And, and, or, or an artist who's from now. And it's just... Man, a man gets you to a place where it's just so alone and so sad and you have nothing and you don't know what you're searching for and you try so hard to be to be something and it's impossible it's impossible you can't get there and there's just the just so many songs i don't know if it's just especially today or if i'm you know getting to an age where i actually listen or what but it's just so it's so sad because that's, and people listen to these songs and they think they're these great songs. And they just can't get over it how great it is. And yet it's all just man's wisdom. And it gets you to a place where it, it's just depression. It's all it leads you down to. And you're depressed. And you forget that God is the one who came up and came out of, He created you, loved you enough to let you mess up, and then He said, Don't worry, I got a fix. And so we find out we are faithful to him. He's given us something through Paul. And what does Paul say in verse 23? If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Your walk is only profitable if you stay in the truth of that gospel. Don't let someone walk you away to some other thing that's not faithful. The reason you can have anything that's worth anything in life is because you stay grounded in the thing that is true. That's the Lord. That's the Word. And that's how we get to a, a place in verse 28, verse 29, whom we preach, because after verse 23 is, is 
hey, this is the mystery that came to me from, from God. I'm telling you, I'm here to fulfill the, the Bible. I'm here to give you a hope of glory. Verse 28, and all that stuff comes, you know, even when you back up to verse 11, 12, 13, 14, those are all the things that God has done for you, all the things that God is, what, what God is doing. He's above things, and, you know, before all things, and by all things can, consist of Him. And verse 28, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Is there anywhere else we can become perfect? No. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to His working. It is no other working other than His. Which worketh in me mightily. Paul, what does Paul call his whole self when he figures out who he is in Christ? Philippians, he calls it dung, right? That's us. You need, you need to think about it that way. And when you're talking to people, you need to get yourself out of the way and let the word do the talking. Right? I'm just a talking head up here. All right? That's exactly right. In Epaphras, verse, in verse 7, our dear fellow servant, he's working, but he's letting the, he's letting the word work through him. Because what does it say? Who is for you, Colossi, a faithful what? Minister of Christ. Not a faithful minister of himself or religion or his career or, or politics, right? What makes him a fellow servant and what makes him faithful is that he's a minister of Christ. He's a steward of Christ. What you put in yourself is what's going to come out. Go to Romans, go to Romans 8, now that, I, now that I said that. Go to Romans 8. Um, yeah, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do what? Mind the things of the flesh. Your thinking process in your spirit what you are going to put in is what you're going to put out I used this as an example last time I was at uh, when I was at Matt, Matt Holly's church and I don't I mean you guys understand my weirdness um, I, I said this out loud and they kind of all came to this look of like what the heck but I don't know maybe you guys will laugh if not it's just me now I, I told my wife and she thought it was hilarious so <laughs> So, anyways, we we have something in common that might be only us two. Uh, my son Ben, right? He is obsessed, obsessed with everything construction vehicles. Okay, and I, I mean I'm serious. We when you know I don't know when I was little and we were driving around, it's like oh there's a cow, wow, and there's a sheep and there's a bug and there's a whatever over here. Ben sees the world, and he sees construction vehicles. He's minding what? All day long. Construction vehicles, especially excavators, because... And dump trucks. You can't have an excavator without a dump truck. Okay? To the point that when I'm driving down the road, and I'm in the car, and I would love to say that it's like only with Ben in the car, but that's not true, to the point... Then I'm like, whoa, excavator. Do oh, you're not in the car. Oops. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a cool excavator. Okay. I am also minding the things of what he's minding. Okay. But that's how he sees life. That's what he's minding. But you can apply that to anything. That is fleshly, right? I mean, so for, Ben's, for Ben right now, it's trucks. I will say he sings hymns better than I do. He loves hymns. But it could be science, right? Science falsely so-called. You could put your trust in that. And many people do. And they're always surprised when it hurts them. You could do it in politics. 
I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. Right or left, whoever's in office, does it ever get better? No. When the side that you like is in there, the other side is what? Causing chaos. Right? Or vice versa. Same thing. You are not going to find any hope there. But yet, you need to ask yourself, I'm not asking you this, and I'm also not judging you. What, what do you watch all day? Is that what we're doing? Right? It, all you're watching is a world falling apart without truth. And the only thing that will change them is this, is starting with the gospel. Because they're alone and they're afraid and they're depressed and they only have what they think is important to go towards in this life, and as soon as they die, it's gone. Right? You're the President of the United States. Most people can't even mention your name. Hey, people younger than me don't know more than, like, you know, four presidents. <laughs> right? They have no idea what the president was. But yet you were the leader of the free world, supposedly. Right? So what are you minding? Okay, and for us, flipping back to Colossians, to the saints and faithful brethren. Hey guys at Colossae, I heard from Epiphras that you guys have a faith. You guys, you you folks have you have fruit coming out of you. It's Christ working in you. That you have something that you're you're applying to your life. That has come from the only thing that is faithful. And it's not a blind faith. It has already proven to us that it's true. How many things in this Bible have come true? We know it's true. It's not blind faith. And we here in Michiana, South Bend, right? We are the Brian Bible Church of South Bend. We have... We, we can get this word in us. It starts with that. And we can start to labor and get out there and show people Christ. It, I mean, don't get me wrong. You can't do that outside of minding this. This is what you're going to put your mind on. And then it will just start to come out of you. Like, like Ben. He doesn't try to be worthy of trucks. Right? He just loves trucks. Because they're cool. You start putting this, spending some time in here, well, guess what? All of a sudden, the work of the ministry starts happening. Epaphras is a faithful minister of Christ to them. That is why he's a fellow servant. And so this area needs God. They don't need Sam. They don't need Ray. They don't need Rick. They don't need you. They need Christ, specifically Romans through Philemon, right? Now, that's not to say that we don't study anything else. But the hope that we have is going to be found there. And this is our labor. This is our faith. We are fellow laborers to, to them or this area of Christ. It starts with this. Then we have a thankfulness, and it just explodes out of us. And then the labor happens. And it just takes us getting out of the way. All right? So that's perfect time. We'll just stop there. I could keep talking forever. Um, but uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, we're just so thankful for your word and your faithfulness, and you're worthy to be trusted. And we know that your son is what's done that for us, and we're just so thankful in all these things. Amen.